You ready? Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the February 16th, 2024 Educational Optimization Committee meeting. Uh, the first agenda is the call to order and verification of quorum, and that exists. And we have additional uh, guests this morning because a lot of our work is blending into uh, real time, shorter term planning, too. So they're sort of uh, going to get in the loop on that as we also look towards the long term planning of the uh, facilities and curriculum moving forward. So welcome our visitors for today. Uh, the second agenda is the approval of the minutes. So can I have a motion to approve? Uh, uh, first comment on if there's changes and then a motion to approve. No, no input. You want to give a motion, Chad? Yeah, sure, sure. Move that we approve the minutes from the last EOC meeting of last month. Second. second. And uh, second. Oh. Aye. Yes, yes. And aye. aye. Yeah, aye. the minutes are complete. Uh, our third agenda item is uh, five bullets. And uh, the first bullet is uh, something we had explored in the past. We put aside through the budget season because we're all very busy for that. But uh, uh, we thought we would revisit this. And it's uh, visits to exemplary schools. We had one. Tom had a list, sort of ideas where we could uh, go visit schools. Uh, I think we did a couple of early ones. We clearly went to a Ed Space conference. And that probably gave us a lot of input from multiple schools, but I like to revisit that and see how we want to proceed moving forward. So, uh, yeah, I, the frame that, oh, sorry. I said, cut you off, Peter. Please continue. No, that's it. It's just, do we have, do, are there a few in mind? And, we have to fit them in somewhere in the next yeah. month or two. Yeah, I have some very concrete questions about that, which would simply be, uh, where are we coordinating the list of potential schools or organizations as sources of inspiration? So where is the list? Who are we putting on the list? Who goes to visit? And then when does that period of investigation close? Does anyone have a input into that? I don't have an ongoing list. So should I take so I, have, I have some input. I, I, I have some input um, with this. So um, I mean, I'm getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but we hope to have um, a design for uh, the middle school um, at the next meeting to be explained. So I think that looking at, you know, we've already looked at some, uh, we looked at plans, we went on the conference, we saw all kinds of virtual tours and things like that at the conference that Dan and I were at. So if we were looking, you know, there's looking kind of long-term a vision for elementary, but then also more immediate with the middle school. And it would be my suggestion that we um, look at some middle schools um, between now and the end, end of the year, because that's kind of where the focus is right now. When we asked uh, Jeff, about us, um, what are a couple of the uh, you know middle schools that you think that you've worked with that we could see when um, Dan and I were were speaking with him? Remember, Dan, he did suggest um, a couple uh, within the state that would be close enough to to drive to and see. So I think that um, you know looking at those two first, I think would be helpful to do. Let's say in in March and April, and then the other thing I would think is. Um, Dan, because of your connections, I know Drew already went to see one update. Um, because of your connections um, in your tri-state group and your, you know, your networking and everything, I think that it would be worthwhile um, it, reaching out to them to see possibly what what they would think. You know, I hesitate to say, well, let's go because Phil was at the conference too. Let's go to Arizona and see this great school. We saw examples of things like that at the conference. Arizona's climate is completely different than ours. So like some of the takeaways um, are good, but they're not uh, necessarily what we would do here. As far as who goes, I think that if, if it was geared to middle school, that, the, that, the, that depending on what we're looking on at a particular site and we get a flavor for it, I think that, um, you know, a board of ed rep should go. I think that... Um, you know, Dan Doak should go because he's a, a middle school principal, obviously. I should go. And then perhaps 
um, if, if Phil in or Mike would want to go. That's the group I would recommend. But again, we have to be careful of, how can I say this? You know, we got into Sandy Hook with a very specific purpose. The days of people roaming around and being invited in when kids are in session and seeing things are very different. And so that's what, when we go to see, it's, it's helpful to see with the children. And I don't know how receptive some school districts would be about bringing in six people from the outside when their kids were there to tour. I know I would be hesitant to try to keep the group small and, and all of that. So, and there's also with the whole idea of Zooming and things like that, perhaps as you, you get an idea, Dan, somebody could walk us through the building on, you know, we can get certain senses without having to travel there. I mean, we don't have any budget, to be perfectly frank, to be flying to Michigan to see school. That's, those are all fair points. So again, back to the questions, which I guess would be a uh, fair point about the input from the conference. I'll give you a couple examples. Like, it depends on how far and wide we want to cast the net. I have pretty deep connections at Columbia Business School, and they launched this giant, huge new campus at Morningside Heights. That is not the same educational mission as we have whatsoever, but it still might be an interesting jumping off point to get some creative inspiration or not. I don't know. Yeah, but close. so for instance, again, the question would be, uh, how do we these put schools, organizations on the list? We should see a thousand places, obviously, but we should probably see more than two. You know, there's some sweet spot in between there. When does that period of investigation close? Because what I don't think is such a great idea is that we get a couple sources of input. We all kind of allow this to drift a little bit, and then we have to make a sort of compressed decision at some point. So Lisa, what do you think is the, yeah, is, is the right place to host that list, to add that list, and which of the list, list and investigation? Well, well, maybe, maybe we can make this a little bit more centralized. Do, do we know in the surrounding area 50 to 100 miles, other communities that are building schools. We know Westport's building one or planning one. Anyone else that we're aware of? Well, that's also kind of why I wanted Dan to use his tri-state connections, which takes in the entire tri-state area. Right. Well, so, and, you know, there's so, one piece I forgot to mention here. Teacher reps from the middle school need to go. You know, it can't be us looking at it where they're the ones that use the space. So they need to be a part of it. Right. And the other thing is, is from a real practical standpoint, any kind of plan to move this middle school forward will be done within the next six months. So it's it's fine to go, but we also have to work within plans that we have that can be tweaked over time. But something, if you're going to submit to the state, it has to be submitted. Correct, Phil? If you want to move for this June, it has to be submitted by June. The designs and everything else have to be put in. Well, so getting back to my previous comment and your response, Dan, it would be good to know who's building schools, right? And who the architects are. I mean, maybe Tecton knows the answer to this. But Tecton, Tecton is a same. Well, they did, give us, they did give us information, but they're selling their own Yeah, stuff, exactly. Too. Tecton I'm not, is I'm not, I'm, We're not I'm suggesting... Per, they should know what's been going on in the... In the uh, in the area yeah. right so they they're they're selling their services of course but we're just looking for information and if we know that community a in poughkeepsie new york is building a middle school that's a short drive right same climate same everything what are the people doing in this environment or spending you know money to build or refurbish a middle school so, Dan, maybe the best way to do it is our next meeting is what, March 8th? Okay. March 16th. So by March 16th, perhaps we can have ideas in a chat if you can share the, your connections with Dan. And we could, it would come out of probably me working with Dan of where we need to go. You can send, I know you're working next week, Dan. Thank you. Um, I'm not. Um, you can reach out to the tri-state people. We can go back to Jeff and get the names of those two schools. I also have the names of a couple people. And then we can um, flesh out from there because it's, it's you know, and then target between March and May to go to maybe, I don't know, five or six places. Then it can also continue, I think, in the fall because Great, things aren't right. finalized. Phil, did you want to say something? 
in, in terms of the visit? Yeah, I don't know. I thought you wanted to speak. Am I? Did I read you wrong? Oh, okay. March 15th is no, the next meeting. Oh, because I'm Great. That sounds perfect. So, so bring suggestions to March 15th meeting, and then between March 15th and May is the period to in investigate, either virtually or if close enough to go to yeah, the visit. And, okay, we'll come up with right. a plan. And you named a great list of stakeholders, which is the administration, obviously, and the teachers who are going to be teaching, and the principal of the school, and if possible, throw in a board of ed member, perhaps. I think so, yeah. Great. Jody, I think the minutes need to be changed. It says March 16th here. No, that was my error. I was looking at the wrong month. It is March 16th. It is March 16th. Friday. Okay, yeah. perfect. Sounds okay. like a great plan. It is I'm so glad you're on the call. Just to summarize, yeah, okay. it's the because we're laser focused uh, as our first big step on the middle school. Our optics will be around looking, investigating, identifying middle schools. That's the best. Thing. Correct. Peter, you're you're fading away a little bit. It was hard to hear you there. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, I would say we're laser focused on the middle school, so the list reflects that, right? The contingent of the, the, the criteria for what we're looking for and the geographic that's what Peter Peter, again, it's it's hard to hear you much softer in your, your microphone. Really? Can you hear me? Yeah. Everybody else, is it just me or can, can everyone hear Peter easily? Now we can. When you step oh, away right. from the computer, the further back you go, you fade a little bit. I'm gonna get really close then. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's the that's the takeaway from the first bullet is laser focused on middle schools. The contingent is middle school focused. Uh, geographically, nature of school stakeholders are middle school focused, and it's the next three months to inform uh, the uh, upcoming bullet on the tecton plan for the middle school and the uh, objective of uh, having a plan submitted to the state this June for the middle school. Okay. Can, can I just add one more? To Lisa's earlier point, we do need a budget, a working capital budget. You know, even if we're going to drive to Poughkeepsie, we do need to put together. We need to put together a working capital budget, so we have money to do basic things like that. We're, you know, we're planning a multi-million-dollar expansion or improvement of a school. You know, and we can't do it, uh, you know, over Zoom. So, Peter, you and I can come up with, you know, and Lisa, yes. a number um, and figure out whether we put it, which budget we put it in. Phil, we talked about this on Wednesday, uh, whenever we met with the Board of Selectmen. So Wednesday we should, night. Yeah, we should think more about that. Right. I was going to talk about that in financial parameters, next steps, but we'll, let's, okay. let, I'm let, sorry. let me revisit that okay. thought and I'll give you some ideas because I had some okay. ideas for that next step, but it's yep, exactly yep. right. Because we have the short term, long term, sort of, uh, it's like offense, defense. So a healthy buildings and materials update. Um, again, this is, uh, as stated earlier in the call, this is sort of where we're, we're not really siloed. We're sort of blending what we're doing in the short term, which is Mike's domain, Phil's domain, with what we want to accomplish in the longer term. So the short term deals with real problems we face today or challenges or repairs, but there's opportunities to use our resources to inform us for the long term. I think that's, and what I stated on Wednesday night, I think that's a fair way of stating it. So what are we doing in the short term? Uh, Mike has uh, his work today. We have our uh, tentative capital budget board that is being renewed, uh, sorry, uh, updated for review. And, uh, with respect to the EOC, the two activities in the short term are the energy assessment. So that's uh, yeah, right. Can we do monitoring beyond just the month to month now, but can it be part of a longer term plan? So as we work with Tecton, how do we implement monitoring to make better and efficient schools? And then we have uh, our DOE test bed 
which Phil and I and Mike are working on because that will inform some DOC decisions in the future. Of course, that's a short-term effort and take short-term resources, but we are looking to implement what we're doing in the long term. Is that pretty fairly stated, guys and folks? I can tell. Did I state that correctly? Yeah, I would say so. Good. So we have a couple action items in the near term to inform us for the long term. Um, a third area is uh, the Green Buildings Conference I'll attend. And, uh, that might come back to financial planning because now we're spreading our net far and wide at times, but uh, we'll, we'll get some good input. And that agenda is quite interesting. And it turns out it also can inform us in the short term as well as the long term. Because if you look at the uh, program, for example, they have everything from uh, data-driven sustainability and energy efficiency to how to plan for the implementation of electric buses, which was the discussion we had on Wednesday night, right? So it's quite interesting what we've inserted ourselves into, right? This is quite quite a, a interesting community that I think uh, only now is starting to become a, this, you know, has momentum nationally a few years ago, sort of boutique, but I think more people. Are so we're still way ahead of the curve, but, you know, getting on, getting involved now is good. Um, my last point, that, that actually will introduce us to another area that uh, I have an article Schools can make use of little known unlimited funds to make their buildings greener. So I think we need to investigate that both in the short term, it has implications for uh, this year 25 uh, budgeting cycle. What can we use next year, two years from now, and then what we do with the EOC plan long term? So that was my healthy buildings update. And then I'll turn it to Chad, who has some insight. So what do we do? Uh, maybe materials or furniture and others because again in the short term we're looking at better furniture for the schools in the long term there's some with ed spaces will be interesting opportunities to extracurricular yeah. furniture and materials so take it over chat sure thank you so i'm going to just explain at a high level what i want to share I, I was hoping to share some visuals but what i'll do afterwards is put into the chat feed some links you can check out about these things and I will also just speak the URLs out loud. So if the public is watching, you can type in some URLs and take a look at those things. <clears throat> so from a high level, I wanna make three points about this. The first is that we have an opportunity to at least investigate some of the most exciting next gen materials that could align with a lot of our sustainability efforts. The better materials demonstrate that Weston, Connecticut is the most forward thinking and innovative school district in the country and also potentially save us money. Now, the reason I say that is because we're literally living through a revolution in building materials and textiles right now. So I want to talk about a few of the cool companies that are doing these things. And then I want to challenge us as people who are trying to source <clears throat> service providers and also materials. I want to challenge us not just to accept like the first proposal that comes across our desk of how it's been traditionally done, but really investigate what is out there. So that's the whole first theme, like next gen materials. Uh, the second is the same lens towards flexible and active seating. And this is building on the grid that Lisa has already done at that conference and, and others of you have done at that conference and drawing a distinction between flexible seating, which is about how you reorder and adjust and make the classroom more dynamic and active seating, which is actually how you help the learners take care of their bodies while they're sitting for four or five, six hours per day. And then the third big theme I want to hit is that I don't think this needs to be expensive. And I think that we should challenge ourselves to how to do these incredibly innovative things and still stay under budget, particularly for things like the furniture. So I'll try to make those three points and keep it brief. I'm going to share a couple different options of building materials. I will mention the URLs. First, a giant disclaimer. One of these building providers is a very mature company. We could buy the product tomorrow and it's a better product than what probably Tecton or other consultants are going to recommend. The other three are very aspirational. 
So do not investigate these and say like, oh, well, they're not ready for, you know, they're not that shovel ready or things like that. These are inspiration points as opposed to final solutions. But I can promise you there are lots of materials out there like this that we should educate ourselves about. So the first is a company called Lingrove, L-I-N-G-R-O-V-E.com for the public who's watching. And I will put that, that link in the uh, chat feed right now. What they do is essentially create from plants. They grow a substitute for wood that is stronger, cheaper, more flexible, lasts longer, and it can be used for big industrial methods like uh, creating a gorgeous, beautiful entryway to a school. Wood would align with all of our sustainability initiatives. It would last longer, look better, and potentially even be less expensive than whatever enamel that you know some consultant might suggest. Next, I'm going to put in the link uh, or in the chat for you three building material companies, all of whom are working on a replacement for concrete. Some of them take plastic, reclaim plastic, 40% and inject it into a plastic production or a concrete production model that also takes carbon out of the air. Futuristic stuff, I know. That's not shovel ready, but that is in the technology pipeline. The other one is called Biomason. Oh, I'm sorry, that one is called Mava, M A A V A dot co. Another one is called Biomason, B I O M A S O N. They're a bit farther along in development. The last is one called Amatech Corp. That's A M A T E C C O R P dot com. And what they do is they're actually working on a moldable gypsum with it. If anybody knows what this would do, it's essentially like moldable stone that is cheaper, stronger and potentially displacing of concrete, which is an incredibly environmentally and resource intensive process. Well, I'm gonna put all four, all four of those links in the chat feed right now. Again, here's the disclaimer. The final three companies are still very much in the, the vision stage. I'm not suggesting we can build our schools yet out of these. Lingrove, we could use. But it's our job, I feel, to make sure we challenge ourselves to find the best next-gen materials, potentially that are actually cheaper, more sustainable, and better overall for the vision of what we're trying to accomplish as, as a school district. This next link, uh, which is at weareteachers.com backslash best flexible seating options, this is a primer. This is nothing new or innovative. In fact, many of you on the call have probably seen this or some version of it. It's just a list of some of the good flexible seating and active seating options out there. I by no means am presenting this as the latest and greatest, most like, cutting edge version of these things. It's just a bit of a primer. And the big challenge I see that we have to wrestle with here are two things. One, we want to do this cheaply. And number two, we also don't want to buy a thousand pounds of plastic, given that we're trying to figure out how to be more sustainable as a district. And a lot of these flexible seating options and active seating options are uh, you know, especially the Amazon varieties are, are highly plastic intensive. All right. So that's kind of my, my piece on the materials. And I just throw that out there as some fodder to get us thinking big picture about. In terms of sustainability and hopefully even give us source for better materials to build with. Peter, back to you. Peter, you're muted or else uh, else not far from the microphone. How's that again? Wow, my computer's really acting up. You know, again, we're returning back to my earlier statement. We're sort of blending what we want to accomplish in the short term with the longer term planning the mission of this. Yeah, I, I recall that we're looking at furniture and we're looking at upgrading the court, one of the court yards in the high school. I was wondering if uh, anything you mentioned could be applied to uh, ladder, right? Since Phil and others are making decisions next year about how to upgrade some of our external space, it'd be interesting to get these materials or their capabilities in a sense swap and demo for, for the value of the materials type thing to, to, to lower exposure yeah. capital expenses, but get something that we can sort of use as a, a pilot but we don't have to answer that question today but that that'd be an interesting exercise i would think to kill two birds yeah. with one, right getting a better courtyard and getting it for lower cost because we're 
willing to let people walk through it and show what the materials can do for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take that on as a research project and at least uh, do some due diligence about what are potential options and come back to you. All right, thank you. If, if that's helpful, I'm also happy to hand it off too. Right, that's it. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have another discussion with, you, with Phil. And his team. That's why I'm over fiscal year 25. Uh, I want to get to the uh, rev revised plan update. I think that may is where we're in most time, and we can down to about half an hour left. So uh, who's going to lead the discussion? Is that Phil on that plan, or at least the, the, the skeleton of that plan? So everyone's at least up to speed on what the steps would be. Peter, can you be a little bit more specific in terms of- Well, I don't know if, I mean, how, has, that plan is attached to the agenda, right? So do you want to walk us through what Tecton uh, sent you as a draft? So everyone, I don't know if everyone's seen it or the public has seen it. Was it attached? There seems to be a lot of background static. I, I, I'm, I don't know if everybody can just mute if you're not talking. Jody, was it attached? No, I didn't have any attachments. There's no attachments. Uh, so, so uh, well, you, I think you addressed this when we talked about uh, visiting tools. So, what would let's let's do it this way. What's the next step? Attack on. Maybe that's just okay. So the next step would, out of, from this. Sure. Sure. The next step with Tacton, just to get you guys up to speed, is um, Phil and I had a conversation yesterday. Phil, where are you? Oh, there you are. Sorry. I'm looking on the screen. Um, you moved. Um, Phil and I had a conversation with um, Jeff yesterday where he went over um, certain aspects of the scope of work to ensure that we were putting in an appropriate amount in the um, capital budget. Phil, do you want to add a little bit? Give it some color, please. Sure. So the conversation um, with the proposal, it's, it's two components. One, uh, the first part is pretty much getting us to, for the, to get us prepared for the grant application and also submittal of the ultimate grant application. The more, the part that's significant to us at this time is the pretty much planning, um, which is the redesign or the reworking of the current plan that was submitted um, to the FOC a few months ago. Um, it's been several months now. So I do believe that there was a conversation um, with members. I think Lisa and Dan um, had a discussion with um, with Jeff just to talk about what the, you know, their thoughts on the plan. Exactly. Dan, can you add a little bit of color to that meeting? And the idea is, is that at the March 16th meeting, we will come with back with a revised draft. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I was going to say some of that discussion was just logistics of how we would um, move students and classes during um, a renovate as new process. Um, and some of the some of the possibilities of how we could move students uh, from one side of the building to another side of the building. We talked about possibly moving a grade temporarily to to the list to allow us to con to allow us to continue instruction during construction. Yeah, but but talk a little bit about specifically about the inside of the building and relating it to the ed space design, Dan. I think that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, we, we did have a discussion about where we would move kids because, yeah. quite frankly that impacts the cost of a project and it also impacts the optimal educational design we want to get. Right. And so some of the conversations you mean just in terms of like uh, natural light and the things we were looking for. Well, natural kind of light, but also pods, the four yes, classes, sure. flexible rooms, yep. cafeteria yep. and that. Yeah. So um, we were just looking at, at the possibilities and, and as Lisa said, trying to take some of the learning from the Ed Spaces conference and making sure that it was uh, reflected in the design so we looked at how we could have, um, you know, grade level pods and then team pods. How we could, how it would make sense to flex some of the spaces. Um, so even if you know to, to uh, put the science labs in in the grade level pods, but next to each other to facilitate some of the storage. Um, we talked about uh, cafeteria, making sure the cafeteria space was located um, 
in, in, in flexible and possibly opening up to a larger room near a uh, safe access to a, a recessed courtyard um, so that we didn't, we were looking at some of the traffic flow also around the building and some of the uh, changes that we would recommend just to make sure that the traffic um, wouldn't cause problems, but instead um, prevent some, some issues. Yeah, and, and some of the other things that we discussed also were is how can we design these areas of learning to have, for example, in each part, an innovation lab, to mm -hmm. have space where a wall could come down and merge into the other, whether it be kind of almost creating like a STEM lab. How can we do that? How can we design space so that teachers have little uh, spaces off of it to defront the room in the classroom? We talked about that. We talked about, you know, not having a, a traffic loop go all all around the back cutting along the original design through the field between the middle school and the high school that was one of the designs and we don't think that's good and so so phil mike dan and i were kind of up to speed with some of the things that we thought would be better um uh, to kind of tweak the original design and jeff is going to be bringing that to our next meeting to kind of show and to go over it along with the time frame of if we're going to move this forward what would it look like we move it forward in June. You know, you talked about referendum. You talked about getting approval of money in December. Like, where does this go from here until the next three or four years? Well, it's a little bit more basic than that. We have to get approval from the Board of Education to go forward with what we believe, what we're going to recommend as the configuration of the campus. I mean, this. The whole project started uh, whether or not we were going to move forward with four schools or consolidate into three um, and everything that's attendant to those decisions. So if we're going to recommend to the Board of Education, to the full Board of Education, that we're going forward with a four school plan um, and the plan is to renovate as new the middle school uh, we have to come to an agreement on the board that, that that's what we're going to do. Um, and Tecton, uh, if we're going to go forward with Tecton, um, because the board will ask, uh, and they should ask, uh, okay, we're going to go with four schools, um, renovate is new versus any other alternative to the middle school brand new, renovate is new, whatever, but we do need to, we do, we do need soon to go to the full board and say, this is the recommendation and here's what we're going to do. Well, so the timeline, we will meet with Tap Tacton on the Friday before the board meeting. Okay. And so it seems to me on the March 18th, we need to put on the board meeting, the recommendation about um, this and the preliminary draft that, that feeds off of that with, with Tacton and next steps. Uh, I mean, that's where I think we need to, to head. You know, yeah, that's, but that's, be an that's item on the agenda. That's soon. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is not, you know, five, six months now. This is in 30 days. So uh, we need to, we, we need a conversation with Tecton has to get, be prepared to have this conversation. Steve, let me interject on that for a second. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, I, I switched to earbuds. So uh, the question, I'm not a pro nor con text on, but I do feel as though the longer that we let the timeline move forward, the more that probably locks us into having them as our, as our sole point of input on this. So just floating the question to the group, would it not be a good idea to, to put out a bit of an RFP to multiple different providers by, besides Tecton so we can compare some apples to apples ideas on this? Um, if, I were making the decision i would i would go broader than tecton yeah now, and and we should i mean this is a major decision on our part well and i think that that has some urgency because the farther along we go with tecton the more conversation we're going to have with the board of ed uh writ large about this so might that be a slightly urgent yeah. task to find some other sources of input well, I do have another source of input, and it is the one that um, Superintendent Scaris talked to me about. I think I mentioned it um, 
uh, several months ago about the um, the architects that that worked on um, Madison and everything else. But Phil, the scope of the work that you reviewed with Tecton does not commit us to Tecton, correct? It does not. The initial rendering or configuration um, that all would be done by Tecton and Tecton would submit the grant application. But I just, um, can I, if I just may ask a clarifying question, when you say seek input from other um, architecture, whatever it is, can you be a little, just a little bit more specific as to what you have in mind? Yeah, I, I actually just, like whoever are Tecton's competitors, essentially. We did, because we, what, you're right, I'm sorry to cut you up. We put Tecton in competition uh, before they were hired to for their for their other project, there are, there are other you know there. Chad's correct. We we and Lisa, we should follow up on that because you know follow up on this firm that uh, the superintendent in Westport recommended. We we need we need more than th this is not a we we need to put out an RFP. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the first questions that the Board of Ed and the community and public would ask is like, okay, well, is there a different option besides Tecton? And, you know, exactly. of course, the implication is also, is there a cheaper option that's implied in there? And, and I'm not saying we have to look for a cheaper option per se, but we do have to look for other options for inspiration. Yeah, and let me go back and refresh my memory on who, what we did for the FOC. I, I, I know I mean, it's like three years ago, maybe more. Um, but we did put it. We did. We did issue an RFP, and we had multiple, multiple. Like I don't know if you remember Peter, four or five or something like that. Uh, uh, applicants for the for the position. Let me let me summarize this for our meetings. The. I, I wasn't at the uh, of the FOC, but I remember there right. were several candidates. Clearly, Tecton was most favored by the town of Weston. In fact, one I think reason we're still locked step with Tecton is both they know us pretty well. To they're familiar to us, to us, but also the town of Weston continues to use them as a resource. So we sort of lost that, but that doesn't preclude food finding a better resource that suits it. Well, well if, if I could clarify that, I, I asked um, Jeff, and Jeff has not um, done any work for the town in a year. They have not been in recent contact with them. And so, um, because I wanted to understand that, but what I understood was the scope of their work was to get us moving with a grant because there have has been a feeling that this has been, the project has not moved forward in a timely manner and that we should try to be doing this for June to put out to get Monday, because if we don't, it's the following January. Either time frame, if you if you wanna put the brakes on, I reached out to this um, other firm September 19th, and I have been waiting to set up a meeting and bring them in. Um, that's when, um, you know, Superintendent Scurry said that Westport actually keeps this group on container. Um, they're a, a international company. Their offices happen to be right here in Madison. So we can certainly set that up. But the original scope of the work, correct me if I'm wrong, Phil, was just to get it moving, to be able to move forward with, um, with putting in an application in June. If we don't want to do that, we want to slow down and look at other different groups and everything, that's fine. But know that then it won't be until January 2025, correct, Phil? No, 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 but but what is it going to It's fine. But if it's, it's, if it's just getting us to the starting line, then that one, that's one that's thing. That's my understanding, What, what do yeah. they want what, to be paid between to, to get us there, Phil? Um, the proposal for the grant application and the con conceptual design um, is approximately $97,000. Basically, we need, we need we need some comparison before we spend a hundred thousand dollars. Can we just have a can you set up a call for, for this firm in Madison that uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, so who would you, know, you like on the call? Uh, this group. 
certainly Chad, Peter, myself, you, Phil. I don't think it has to go much broader than that unless anyone anyone else wants to do it. We, this is just an introductory phone call, but if they come highly recommended and they're on retainer, you know, yes. in the, to the Westport school system, we should know who they are. Um, Agreed. Agreed. I'm happy to join the call. That's fine. But if all of you are on the call, then that becomes a meeting. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I don't know if we have, we narrow the group and have one of you there to get a similar proposal. Good point. Um, that, that would, it, to Lisa's point, that would be a March 16th agenda item to have them uh, ballpark their view of getting a grant prepared. No, no. Right. No, I don't want, no, I, no, no. We don't want to put it on the, we don't even know who these people right. are. Peter, right. if you want to join with Lisa, that's fine. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be now in the, mid-March, we should have this phone call just to get a ballpark idea of where they, they would come in, why, what they're... That's fine. I mean, the gentleman leads the Connecticut K-12 Public School Division of this company and has worked specifically in Westport and Madison. His name is Charles Warrington, and I can certainly arrange um, a conversation. Like I said, I reached out to him back in September. So I have his cell number, all of his contact information, so we can certainly set up a, a call. Yeah, but I, let's not let it linger to mid-March. Let's see if it can be done whenever the two of you... Well, I agree. It's been lingering since September, to be frank. So, um, so we, I will contact him now. Okay. I'm sorry. Again, I'm, I'm still a little bit um, un, un, unclear in terms of what exactly are we trying to do. And the, are we trying to get a second opinion in terms of the cost or is it a cost plus conceptual design? Well, I, I think the exercise is to replicate what Tecton did as a sanity check. Yeah, they, agreed. I, I would say, oh, go ahead, Peter. No, it's just what they've done and what they quoted as sanity check just to Sense. That's fine, but remember, some of what Tecton did, and that's why I went back to Tecton, was to honor the work of the FOC and the money that was spent to get Tecton's original um, specifications and all of that. So, it, it, this may be pretty simple, actually, which is I think we could have a quick conversation to see if 97,000 is ballpark. If it is, let's not reinvent the wheel and not make ourselves extra work and proceed with that 97,000 just to get to the starting line. But then the bigger question is we do need a, a pretty robust RFP for what the final product would be. And that yes. would need to be, I think, you know, three to five different potential proposals. Does that help uh, clarify? Yes, exactly. We, we always knew that we would have to do an RFP for the majority of the other work. We just need a point of reference to what's been proposed by Tecton. Okay, thank you. So I want to, again, make sure the agenda reflects that comment. And I want to uh, also make sure that our meetings reflect Dan's comment about disruption, because this is the first I heard that we're considering using other buildings as a swing space. So. One of the assumptions is the other building is going to assume the student population for sweet space, right? So that has to be understood. Yes, we know that. Yeah, yeah. And, but that has to be communicated to, the, as Steve said, to the board members that we, we, you know, WISP becomes the swing space. So that becomes a critical piece of it for the campus, right? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I think we're getting a little bit ahead of with swing space and stuff. That was not the focus of the meeting. No. What it was was when we were talking about it, they were making the point, which I appreciate, that if you had where you move the children will and you can move them will give us a better design. And my feeling is is I live through portables all over that field. And so we said, well, then if we had to move a grade out which grade and where then becomes the question and we didn't that we didn't get any further really than that um so but you know for those of us now that 
are listening to this, I guess, uh, <laughs> like we didn't get any further than that. So no, but that's always been part of the Tecton plan. You know, what do you do with the students while the yes. school is under some form of construction? So, I mean, that's a big part of the puzzle. Yes. And so we began an internal discussion on this about where we would um, put them in which grade. But it was a very small part of our discussion. It's a consideration for the uh, other question of the campus configuration. I, I think that was my point. Um, yes, exactly. And and the thing is, is when you look at you need a minimum of eight classrooms to move a grade out. That's the bottom line. So where are there there where is that space and how that can be accomplished? So in the end, we get the best design. All right, that's that's the takeaway for the meeting notes. That's perfect. Um, the financial parameters and as Steve Steve had um, rightly Peter. Mentioned. Yes, real, real quick. Um, I just again, I'm sorry. Just. Just in terms of, I, I know we're just starting out, in terms of a timeline, have we, as a group, um, agreed on a timeline um, in terms of when we would like to see this project started? Because just in terms of, I know Jeff is probably gonna have a, a conversation about this when, when they meet Tecton, is that if we submit, well, for whatever June that we submit the grant application, because that's when it's due, we will not get word on whether or not it's approved until the following spring. Um, and we would also need a referendum in place as well. So if, again, so if we do not, if we do it this June, we will get a response in 25. If we do not do it this June, we will be doing it in June of 25 for a response in 26. Correct. So we have so not that, established a, a timeline. Correct. That that feeds into the next agenda item, which is the financial parameters, right? Because um, there's multiple elements. The first element is we're doing work today, legwork today, and it's unfunded legwork. We're going every which direction to to cast our net, as that says, right? So from now to July 1st, we, we do things, but they're not funded. From July 1st onwards, we have one thing that's funded or it's been submitted to be funded, which is the Tecton $97,000, right? That's the exam in the next week or so. Uh, <coughs> beyond that, uh, so that's a consideration sort of in the midterm. And then in the longer term, right, if it's according, you know, what Phil's input was, if it's a referendum for spring of uh, 25, then that's the larger uh, board of finance input, right? Is it is it simply a referendum for one school, for multiple schools, and what's our what box are we working in? And that's unknown to us, right? We don't have a cost to bring for one school, let alone four schools. Where do we have their top down? Is this sort of the box you're operating in? So how do we tackle all three? timelines these time periods. well i know that they said that it would be one school at a time that's how the approval would go one project yeah. at a time the first we think should be the middle school yeah there's not enough capital there's first of all there's not enough capital yeah. if we wanted to do two at the same time you know to phase in how it's to be financed so um you know so that's one gating issue and if it's the middle school first, which I think we've all agreed that it should be, um, then you know that's what we're working to. So that that's sort of the parameter of the re potential referendum, and we'll have information for that in, if we file this June for a referendum of twenty five. So that's our. That's the nut that we think we'll, we will talk to Board of Finance about that one school. So we'll do it serially. Okay, so backing down towards today, we have a capital expense that is being reviewed for Tecton work. And that may be sufficient for fiscal year 25, right? We're not planning on asking any more for that. So 
but we have to be cognizant that we mean still need other clients or other consultants or, or other test beds, whatever, whatever we need to make an informed decision. From this morning to July 1st, we need just a little not travel fund, domestic fund, right? So, yeah, they, they be back. Of course, I would, I would forward that we have some surplus that maybe we need to have a little reserve so to cover anything we need to do before July 1st. I agree, Peter. Let's, let's just come up with a number and we'll converse so with we would, to... we would bring that to the finance operations and facilities meeting in the next month or so saying, look, let's, we, we think we need this well, allocation. Yeah, but Phil, uh, Phil, if we're going to do this, we have to put it in our budget. Correct, because... I probably if so it probably will cover two years because if we're starting now we need to cover whatever costs would remain of this year and then it will continue into 25 so it's two parts right but it we need to have a number before before uh before our budget is approved correct yeah for the midterm yes yeah short term yeah. we have some funds available to us if, if necessary Excellent. So we'll we need to also work on that in the next couple of weeks because we're in cycle. Um, we're heading to our nine fifteen stop time. So I just wanted to uh, address the last uh, agenda item, and uh, and the good news this one's free and <laughs> until July first. We don't have to count for it. But the other news it may cost money if we continue with with these type of workshops in fiscal year 25. So we should meet with them first to see what happens next to inform our future budget. So here's the offer I got from IDO. Uh, they are willing to host a virtual workshop session where they share stories of physical building design, program design, school design, and design for climate as means of inspiring and helping our team to think outside the box uh, they could do it on our timeline and can accommodate both days or times with just a few weeks of advance notice. Really on us like that we can have I think this feeds into uh, one of the bullets on the head space presentation for uh, bringing in stakeholders, getting the mindset aligned, uh, so administration building principles and other consumers, you know, our group. So it's just uh, on us. We just tell them, yeah, let's do this in May or June. And I will just highlight where their education practice and their climate practice combined. That is uh, and, uh, consistent with where we started today, where this sustainability and education is really starting to go back. A lot of activity in school. So we just have to pick the same time. So I'll leave yep. it to the administration to plan that. This is the firm from San Francisco that you're. Yes. You, you know? Yeah. That'd be great. So that's the meeting note action item. Just pick a day and time and we can get the, all the folks in the same room with them and be prepared to ask them a lot of good questions that will inform all the other issues we've talked about today. Okay. All right, so a uh, short list of action items is uh, the uh, Tecton, the sanity check on Tecton conversation, uh, drilling down on a board of ed decision on building campus configuration, and uh, some, uh, some of Chad's input for Phil, some of my input for Mike, and the last is with that. Uh, any further questions or comments, or can we move to adjournment? 
Uh, if we could move to a German, and then if Peter, you, Lisa, Phil, and I could stay on the line after Jody uh, turns it off, that'd be great. Thanks. Excellent. So do I have a motion? A motion to it. So moved. A second. I uh, second. Yep, I second. We all agree. Say aye. Yep. You agree yep. with the German. Agree. Aye. We are the February 16, 2024 Educational Optimization Committee meeting has been adjourned at 8, 9, 16 a.m. roughly on February 16th. Thank you. And